Okay, Baba. So hello to our little group. And we're going to start something new this week. We, we spent the last month working on seeking love outside of ourself. And, um, and now we're actually going to do the work on the body. And, and there's some things I would like to say about it and, and quotes from Baba and Byron Katie. But um, I'm going to read to you from Discourses, pages 392 through 395, excerpts from those pages. So this is Baba. Humanity is subject to much suffering, physical and mental. Of these two, mental suffering is the more acute. Physical suffering sometimes comes as a blessing because it serves the purpose of easing mental suffering by weaning away one's attention from mental suffering. The true suffering that counts is mental, which is rooted in the frustration of desires. If man becomes desireless and contented, he will be free from his self-inflicted suffering. When an individual is thus contented, he does not require any solutions to problems because the problems that confront worldly persons have disappeared. The suffering that comes from purging the mind of its many desires exists, even when the soul may be ready to renounce them, because this decision of the soul goes counter to the inclination of the ego mind to persist through its habitual desires. Renunciation of desires curtails the very life of the ego mind. Therefore, it is a process in, invariably accompanied by acute suffering. But such suffering is wholesome for the soul because it liberates the soul from bondage. Not all suffering is bad. When suffering leads to the eternal happiness of desirelessness, it should be regarded as a blessing in disguise. So, so today we're going to shift our focus to working on the body, which Baba says is a shadow. So the body is like a shadow. And I, I'm going to read this excerpt from The Wayfarers by William Duncan. Um, re, it's regarding the Mus, who I am completely fascinated with. And this is from pages 33 and 34 of The Wayfarers. And its, it's heading is, Know All the Universe to be Zero. So... From general standards of society, religion, health, morality, and so forth, cleanliness of body and mind are indispensable. It is, however, very easy to keep the body clean, but cleanliness of mind is very difficult indeed. The more one gets attached to body cleanliness for merely selfish reasons, the less are the chances of having a clean mind. If, however, one is given up wholly to mental cleanliness, which means becoming free from low, selfish, impure desires and thoughts of lust, greed, anger, backbiting, etc. The less is one's mind attached to bodily needs and bodily cleanliness. All this applies to ordinary persons. Now, of the five types, God merged, God intoxicated, God absorbed, God communed, and God mad, the God-absorbed and God-communed can more or less keep their bodies clean. Their minds are almost automatically clean due to their being absorbed in God or in communion with God. But the God-mad, the God-intoxicated, and the God-merged all invariably have dirty bodies, live in dirty surroundings, and may have dirty physical habits. A God mad has a clean, pure mind. A God intoxicated has a mind, but no thoughts, for his mind is simply enjoying the intoxicated state. A God merged has no mind. He is fully merged in God. So in these three cases, their mental cleanliness and purity cannot be questioned. Now, why should their bodies and environments be dirty? You will find that the majority of ordinary mad people have very little consciousness of their bodies. So if an ordinary mind, when mad, does not pay attention to bodily cleanliness, then the three types of God men, 
who unconsciously or consciously know all the universe to be zero, body to be a shadow, and whose minds are absolutely unattached to the body, cannot be expected to keep their surroundings clean. So we're just getting some information here before we start exploring this dang body that you know we all have and and uh, you know that causes a lot of us trouble. <laughs> so I've really in, been enjoying just it just came to me to do the work on the body next. And so I've really been enjoying doing some of the research and finding these quotes because <clears throat> I definitely uh, suffer bodily pains and it just helps me be more detached from it. So this is another short quote from Baba from Lord Meher, page 3,771. So this is from 1955. He says, we have bodies and they are subject to all sorts of ailments. Those who have realized the self and do not come down to normal consciousness are immune from such bodily disturbances. Baba is suffering from a cold. Because I have come down to gross consciousness, I am subject to bodily suffering. So now we have some nice perspective on this condition, this human condition that we're in. And here's one more from Lord Meher. This is from 1926, page 712 of Lord Meher. And Baba is saying, he's explaining to the Mandali about the state after death. And he says, a person dies when his sanskaras are exhausted, spent in full. After a person dies, his sanskaras snap the mind's connection with the gross body. At that time, he receives such a shock that he forgets every incident of his past life. But even though the gross body drops, the mind and the subtle body remain full of samskaras. So, does anybody have anything they'd like to say before we... I'm going to read a few Byron Katie quotes to give us another reflection of, of, uh, of a healthy way to be with our bodies. But if anybody has something they'd like to say at this point, please feel free to share. Yeah, I just wonder like what my sanskaras are that I have to live through this pandemic. And sometimes I think like how lucky dead people are. I had a friend who died in December and she was quite young. And I just, sometimes I envy her because she doesn't have to go through this. And I was- Yeah, well- but we know what Baba says. He says, we carry the mental body over to our new body. So when she gets her new body, she'll just pick up where she left off. So, yeah. so I hear you and I have a lot of um, empathy for what you're saying. And I also like to keep reminding myself that the real death is dying while we're in the body. Because if we can die while we're in the body and just keep going, we're going to have a lot better life, you know, the next time. How would you do that? Well, I think we're all doing it, you know, just by, just by giving up. I mean, like things like backbiting, um, you know, and some, some level of self-control. Those are all ways that our ego dies because we're not feeding our ego, you know, um, by doing those things like lust, greed, anger, backbiting, um, you know, on and on and on. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't know, like if I'm, so I'm dying to my low desires, my low impulses. Is that what Yeah, and that's the real death. The body just, I mean, the body is just a shadow. It's, it's, I guess it's the reflection, actually, of our mental bodies. But I, I, I can't say that for sure. Um, but I think Baba talks about that. Yeah. Why I, don't I... Go ahead. I just sound like living through this pandemic. Well, you know, I can say that there's a lot of things I don't enjoy about this life. But with Baba it all has mean, meaning because if I keep remembering him, you know, he said, 
God, if God realization was easy, it wouldn't be worth it. And we're all moving towards that. So you just have to know that. That's what I say. What do you think, Cliff? <laughs> but you have to unmute. You have to unmute yourself. You know, I've already been realized. Oh. <laughs> what are you doing here then? You don't need this. Yeah. And I it's usually just, don't talk about it because I don't want you to all feel bad. And so you're just here to help us, right? It is so great. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. You know, what I, I did have is we're, because, you know, sometimes we feel like shit. We feel so bad. <laughs> and then, like, it's amazing how much better we'll feel an hour or two later or so, or maybe it's just for a few days. Some, usually yeah. I don't feel bad. It doesn't keep going on for weeks and weeks. I'm lucky that way. But, uh, yeah. but the thing is that Baba tells us that we all have it already. And just with that knowledge, if we can tune in to even just pretending about our own divinity, just experiencing, try to just block out all the confusion and just go deeper in and try and get past that and experience a little bit of bliss and just tune yeah. into I am God. Thing, yeah, so. yeah. Well, Tina, the other thought that comes to me is that um, that first quote I read, you know, Baba said that mental suffering is the suffering that really counts. And I think you're probably going through mental suffering from the COVID situation so think of all the sanskaras that you're burning up you might I, just no i'm not aware of burning sanskaras you could be right about that well just tell just tell me if if you do get god realization please come back to the circle <laughs> inquiry circle and share with us because that would be really nice <laughs> mm. okay. okay good so i'm going to read you uh, some quotes from byron katie on the body just to give you Another reflection. This is from her book, Question Your Thinking. It's a little book. And I like it because it's broken down into different sections. And so I'm reading from the section on health, sickness, and death. You know, and so she said, every story, every story we tell is about body identification. Without a story, there's no body. And then she goes on to say, Bodies don't think, care, or have any problem with themselves. They never beat themselves up or shame themselves. They simply try to keep themselves balanced and healthy. They're entirely efficient, intelligent, kind, and resourceful. Where there's no thought, there's no problem. It's the story we believe prior to doing inquiry that leaves us confused. I tell the story of my body, and because I haven't inquired, I believe that my body is the problem, and that if only this or that changed, I'd be happy, but my suffering can't be my body's fault. And then she goes on to say, your body is not your business. Your business is your thinking, and in the piece of that, you're very clear about what to do. And then the body becomes a lot of fun because you're not invested in whether it lives or dies. It's nothing more than a metaphor for your thinking mirrored back to you. She says, for people who are tired of the pain, nothing could be worse than trying to control what can't be controlled. If you want real control, drop the illusion of control. Let life have you. It does anyway. You're just telling the story about how it doesn't. That story can never be real. You didn't make the weather or the sun or the moon. You have no control over your lungs or your heart or your ability to see or walk. One minute you're fine and healthy and the next minute you're not. When we try to be safe, we live our lives being very, very careful and we wind up having no lives. I like to say, don't be careful, you could hurt yourself. So I'll just read a few more paragraphs. She says, bodies don't crave, bodies don't want, bodies don't know, bodies don't care. They don't get hungry or thirsty. It's what the mind attaches to. 
that the body reflects. There are no physical addictions, only mental ones. Body follows mind. It doesn't have a choice. Actually, it's simultaneous, but as long as you're mentally experiencing duality, body follows mind. All the thoughts we attach to are about survival, then health, then comfort, then pleasure. Every thought has to be about I. That's how you survive. And then as soon as you get your house, your car, your piece of turf, your thoughts turn to the story of how you need to be healthy and comfortable. You put stuff in the shopping cart, in the house, and as soon as you're comfortable, your thoughts turn to pleasure. This is full-scale body identification. There's no thought that isn't about the body. So you go to pleasure when you have your little ducks in order. And all pleasure is pain because you're worried about losing it and trying to make it last or to get more of it. You never really experience it. You're always in the past or future. So I just read those so you could get a little flavor of, of who Byron Katie is. And um, I spent a lot of time with her when I was training and staffing her nine day schools. And um, I definitely experienced her as someone who's totally non-attached. So it was a good, she was a good, um, experience for me. So what I so what I decided to do is we're going to do the work on our bodies. And and so you know, we're just going to do the first statement today, you know, I'm and I have to do a generic one and then you can find your specific situation. So what I've said is I'm unhappy with my body because my body isn't healthy enough. Now, can everybody buy into that? belief to to um, inquire into my body isn't healthy enough i just need to make sure we're all on board together because that's yes. that's what <laughs> thank you i figured everybody's got some something i mean baba you know he said because he comes down to gross consciousness he's his body suffers i mean he get, he was suffering in his gross body a lot so okay. we are in good company. Even hey, if we're, Jackie. we're hey. we still have to, uh, you know, we're all going to die and, our, you know, we age and we have health issues. All, everybody. Yeah. yeah. And can we, can we do specific things like, I, you know, not liking extra weight or things yes, like that? Yes. And the way you would do that is when I say it isn't healthy enough, you're going to say to yourself, my body weighs too much. Okay. And then, and then all the sub questions and what I ask, you'll be specifically working on that. And, you know, I have to tell you, <clears throat> Katie famously did the work with Oprah Winfrey once on her program. And it was, uh -huh. a, it had to, I don't know if you ever saw it, but it was adorable because it was about that Oprah said her, she weighed too much. Uh -huh. And Katie yeah. was, dumb, she goes, she she was like, is that true? How could that possibly be true? And, and then she asked the audience, you know, this huge audience. So raise your hand if you would if you love Oprah less because she, she, her body weighs this certain amount. And of course, everybody loved her no matter what. And it was such a beautiful thing because, you know, I realize it. I mean, I worry about getting old and all the wrinkles I'm getting and. You know, it's like big deal. If people love me, they love me. Mm -hmm. It just it just doesn't matter. But it really helps to do inquiry on the body to just strip away all of these beliefs we have about our body not being exactly perfect for us. Because in reality, we have exactly the body we need. Mm -hmm. you know? And 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 so it's just a beautiful thing to consider. Yeah. All right. So, so everybody heard what I said to Jackie. So if you have a very specific thing, you can just do the work on that and answer out of that. And otherwise, my body isn't healthy enough. I mean, I can give you a million reasons why my body isn't healthy enough. I can, you know, that that interpreter in the left brain just wants to prove its story. And man, I've got so much proof. So and, and I noticed that, you know, life is good. And there's something really sweet about getting older. 
Oh yeah, what? <laughs> okay, so, well, so I could, so one thing is I don't have to work all the time, you know? I feel like, you know, I'm in my, now that I'm in my 70s, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't have to prove anything. I can spend the morning in my garden. I can spend the morning with Baba. I can enjoy, you know, I've always enjoyed cooking, but, and believe me, I still have an inner critic that pushes me like work, work, work. But it's, it's, I feel like I have more permission to just be still and to take it slowly. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Just be and, happy. Enjoy. Yeah. And I just like, I noticed that my husband loves me no matter how I look or whatever. It's like love is so beyond the body. You know, and I remember a, a while back, my, my son said to me, <laughs> he said something about as I aged, he said, you just become more beautiful because, because, um, what, how did he put it? I wish I could remember his words, but they really touched my heart. He's, he just said it was, it was like there was more transparency with aging. Wow. And you know, it really, I loved that. And I, and I feel the truth of it. There's more transparency in the older we get. We, you know, especially for people on a spiritual path, it's like, it's like, we know what's important. God is important. And all this other stuff isn't important, but it's harder. I think when we're young and we're working and we're being householders, you know, and we're trying to make a living and we're doing all these things and we're so busy. Um, and then it, when we get older, there's just some kind of a sweetness in slowing down and, and just thinking about God and Baba all the time. So that's my promotion for aging. <laughs> okay. But some people do love others because of the way they look. Well, I wouldn't call that love. Okay. <laughs> that's something else, but that's not love. And, and I thought that um, that came really clear when Katie asked the huge audience, who loves Oprah less because of her weight? And like nobody loved her less. Well, they're not going to say. Someone, you just love them. <laughs> what? They probably wouldn't say because they wouldn't. No. You know, I had a grandmother who was very fat. And she, and she had many grandchildren because my father was one of eight children and they all had like five kids. And so we had just tons of cousins. And I remember we loved being, we called her Ganner. And I can remember saying, I love my Ganner's fat because somebody said something about her being fat. And I just remember just clinging to her and saying, I love my Ganner's fat. And she, her grandchildren just adored her. She had such a beautiful heart it's not and such a for you to be overweight. Pardon? You know, it's not that healthy. It's not that no. healthy to be overweight. No, but um, but you know, do you remember the story of one of um, Shirdi Sai Baba's disciples? He was corpulent, and whenever the people came to see Sai Baba, he would. Um, Get, take money, you know, from all the people who were coming to see him. And then he would go get food for this really corpulent disciple. And I mean, I think it might be in Lord My Hair, but he talked about how this, this particular soul was just like consuming everyone's karma by eating like that. So we just don't know. I mean, how can we know? You know, we can never judge anything. Anyway, okay, shall we begin? <laughs> you have to take a few gentle breaths and just relax. <sighs> okay, so my body isn't healthy enough. Is it true? And just unmute yourselves and give your yes and no whenever you're ready. My body isn't healthy enough. Is it true? No, yes. It's not black and white. Yes. It's, it's a little. Well, not then healthy. you say no. If we can't, 
I mean, you can say yes or no, but if you, you could say yes. And then on question two, can you absolutely know that it's true that your body isn't healthy enough? That's the one where if it's not black and white, that's the one where you could say, no, I can't absolutely know. So I'm going to just ask the question for everyone who's still pondering. Can you absolutely know that it's true that your body isn't healthy enough? No. No. Sure. No. Okay. So how do you react? What happens when you're believing the thought that your body isn't healthy enough? What emotions do you feel? Fear. Yeah. Anybody else notice what emotions you feel? Uh, rejection. I feel discouraged. Annoyed. Annoyed. Okay. At myself. For not, for not finding the perfect remedies for your body? Is for not having self-control over snacking. Oh, okay. Okay, I could, I, I, you know, that's why I laugh at myself because I do so many healthy things, but I know I offset everything because I, I like to have my snacks. So there it is, the human condition. Crackers. Oh, I'm with you. I am in the cracker club. My crackers, yeah. yeah. Crunchy, salty things. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that reminds me, I remember reading a story about Gohair. Um, I think it was in Growing Up With God. And you know, Sheila Kulchuri is telling all these stories about the women Mondali. And some people were very upset. How could she write those stories? But I loved it because I could so identify with them. And, and this particular story was where Gohair would put nuts in her pocket and go around eating them. You know, and, and uh, I just was like, yeah, you go, girl. Phyllis <laughs> book is one of my favorite books I ever read. Like, it's so good, you know. Wh which one? You know, uh, you know. Uh, Growing Up With God? Yeah. Yeah. One of my favorite books. It was just, it's just fun. Right. It's a fun book. She's fun, it, you know. I know. I loved it. I actually got to work on that book. I did proofreading for it. And, you did. Wow. And it was just like she's such a joy. She's a talker and she's kind of... She's very yeah. articulate. Yeah. 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 But, you know, out of the mouths of babes, I mean, it, it's, it was just so sweet to have to have that child's viewpoint. And then I also really loved her relationship with Duncan. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, so, so that was pretty wonderful. Yeah. So, what was her relationship with Duncan? Well, um, she, they had a friendship. They hmm. were really good friends and she spent a lot of time with him. And you know, from what I understand, he was pretty reclusive. Is that right, Cliff? Yeah, yeah, he wasn't very close with anybody, really. I mean, he was almost must like himself. Yeah. And, you know, he died very soon after Baba, and it was just because, you know, he loved him so completely. That's my story about him. Yeah. Um, and, and yet he had this beautiful friendship with, with Sheila Kalchuri, and I just, I don't know, it was very, it was just such a lovely thing. So... We're going to go back to the emotions. So who would be willing to, I want everyone, whether you found annoyance or discouragement or, or I forget what the other adjectives were. What was yours, Tina? Fear. Fear. So, so someone please volunteer to, after you locate the emotion in your body, Please volunteer to, we're all going to go into the emotion that we're feeling for 60 to 90 seconds and just notice what happens. And then, uh, and then whoever would like to share, I would love to hear your, 
what you experienced as you do that. And remember, we always go into that sensation in our physical body as the objective observer. We are the witness of this. So not only are we not our thoughts, we're not our emotions, we're not our sensations, and we're not our body. So this is something we're going to get more clear on as we spend the next you know, few weeks on the body. So let's just take a few gentle breaths and go in to find where, like I'm going to find my discouragement. Where is it in my body? And then just be with your emotion for, for that amount of time and just witness it. So would anyone like to share what you notice? I can share the discouragement that I felt. It was in my heart area. And when I really witnessed it, I actually noticed very shallow breathing and almost a, what I would describe as inflammation in my heart area. And then I just noticed a letting go, like I felt I had a deep sigh that came out. And then I noticed that my neck and shoulders relaxed. And then I recognized the thought that I felt, I feel guilty for my unhealthy, whatever's not healthy in me. And I also recognized at the same moment that it's okay and it's not my fault. Um, and then I just, I felt this like ease. I felt ease in my heart area. And a, 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 it's a lighter feeling. I still have some, some heaviness because I'm going through some kind of a health thing right now. But I definitely felt a release. Could anybody else share their, what they noticed? I'm not sure I completely followed the exercise. What was the thing we were supposed to be meditating on? So what was the emotion that you had identified when you're believing the thought that you weigh too much? Uh -huh. Well, for myself, I was aware of the rejection of myself in the now moment. Okay. So yeah. then you would go inside and find where you feel that rejection in your body. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then what happens in my experience is that if you do stay with the uncomfortable emotions and sensations, something else arises. There's like, always love is underneath everything, but it takes courage to fully feel these very difficult emotions and sensations. And, you know, we only do it for a short time because it's hard work but if we if we in, 
if we just get in the habit of noticing when things feel heavy and we can just be with it, I've just noticed that then things lighten up. It's like just honoring whatever it is that's coming up for me right now. And I just march on because I know none of this is real, you know. This body isn't real. The mind isn't real. Only the soul, you know, the oversoul. I mean, we're all individualized souls, but ultimately we're just one big soul. Mm -hmm. So would anybody else like to share anything before we go on to the next sub-question? And, you know, don't put up the sub-questions today, Diantha. I'm just going to, um, okay. I will just say them because I'm just really enjoying looking at Baba. So you can just keep him there. I think it's a nice image for us to work with today. You know, the body is just like the, the heaviest level of, of what we have to deal with. And when I look at this image of Baba, he just takes me in, like, almost like it's, there's no end to, <laughs> to what it is. And um, it's a beautiful meditation. So just notice at what age that thought first occurred to you that my body isn't healthy enough. Like immediately I have this memory of when I was 45 and I was doing editorial work and I couldn't read the small print. And that was when I realized I had to get glasses. And I just remember going, no, there's no way. I should never have to wear glasses. So that was, that was the image that just arose for me. Anybody else want to share? At what age the thought first occurred to you, my body isn't healthy enough? <coughs> Tina? Yeah, my father sold insurance, and he had this book called Risk Appraisal that went through all the various symptoms of these diseases. Uh -huh. Like, really scary. <laughs> Because I started reading about all these horrible diseases that you could get. And how old were you? How about how old were you when you did that? Maybe like eight. Wow. Yeah. And so I love that, you know, I always say trust the image that arises because then there's always something there to refer back to. If you need to, you can just give empathy to that little eight-year-old Tina you know, for, for that. And I can definitely do that for my 45 year old self, you know, believing that, you know, that I should have perfect eyesight. Good grief. And also my father used to walk in the door and he would say, you know, so-and-so drop today, you know, cause he sold insurance. And He's like, perfectly healthy and just peeled over dead at the corner of Broad and High. <laughs> Which probably wasn't good for his life insurance business, right? Yeah. Yeah. And he was like, you know, only oh, 45 gosh. years old. You know, whatever. Yeah. I, I know. know. But, you know, Baba says, says we, we die when we finish our sanskaras for this life. Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's all written. And, and so, um, you know, and yeah. And that is um, spiel to people to buy life insurance because all these people were dropping like flies. <laughs> <laughs> and they should get more life insurance because they could oh leave. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's all insurance also, New York life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Like that? What? Did he tell you about all these people dropping dead suddenly? Well, he, my father's father died when he was nine. Oh. So my dad actually really felt a calling that it was a great thing. Yeah. And uh, he did very well with it to a point, and then he was a manager, and then he really failed trying getting back into sales. And he actually really struggled, and we had a lot of problems. As I was yeah, my father was the manager also. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I bought life insurance, I don't know when, 
We got mm -hmm. it when I was probably in my 50s and it was so expensive that I just dropped it and I've, ne I've never had it since. I just did it for like one year. So, yeah. but I can understand why, why like uh, the head of the household would get it, you know, to make sure the family would be okay. That makes perfect sense. Yeah, the, the whole life is good to get, but, you know, I got rid of all mine at a certain point. I had a bunch yeah. of them. Yeah. This way of telling us, it, it seemed like every day people were keeling over dead. Yeah. <laughs> well, especially when your father sells life insurance, you're going to hear about it for sure. Yeah. I, I studied with this great percussionist, a uh, famous guy who, his father, when he was growing up, would say, you see those pretty flowers by the side of the road? They're only just going to die and turn to seed. So they're not so great. Like, I forget exactly how you put it, but basically everything was gloom and doom. Like, oh. everything. He grew yeah, up. My, my father was definitely a prophet of doom. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember what you said, Cliff, reminded me of a, of a Baba story where you probably know this, that Erich was doing what he did and Baba was having dark, you know, everybody was passing by him and this beautiful young woman came and of course, Baba knew what Erich was thinking. Yeah. And then do you remember Baba had her stay there? He held her face. He said, she's so beautiful, isn't she? And yeah. then he said, and she's going to grow old and get ugly. And I mean, I don't know if he said ugly, but it's like, you know, it's so true. Yeah. Baba is so amazing. You know, it's like yeah. he can enjoy the beauty, but it's like, eh, it's just a passing show. We get so caught up in, in our looks and our vanity yes. And, yes. and the tr attractions and everything. It's exactly. And, and that is, and that I think is one of the beautiful things of getting older because yeah. that all fades. Yeah. And we can Some actually try to uh, get facelifts and things like that. Yeah. Oh, I know. Yeah, my uh, my daughter-in-law's mother was trying to convince me to come down to Mexico where <laughs> she lives and get a facelift for only four thousand dollars. I don't. But you know, me. I, I think I'd be too scared. You know, I know yeah, people well, get really yeah, messed up. Weird. Yeah. You could anyway, go fund me like on Facebook for it. <laughs> Would you fund me, Cliff? Would you uh, fund me? <laughs> if you, you fund me, maybe I'll do it. Right no, I guess I don't have that much vanity, to be honest. You're so, so pretty. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. How much does it cost to get hit? Oh, I'm kidding. What? I okay. just said, how much does it cost to get hair? Uh, probably too much. You could ask, uh, you know, Donald Trump. He got that, didn't he? Oh, yeah, true. But he can, can afford it. Yeah, yeah, he certainly can. Okay, so now we're back to my body isn't healthy enough. Right. I I want you to notice how do you treat your body when you're believing that thought? How do you treat your body when you're believing the thought that it isn't healthy enough? Just ponder that for a minute and then speak up. When this whole COVID thing started, I like get all these vitamins because I, I was, yeah. and people telling me get these mushrooms, get this, get <laughs> and you know, powdered <laughs> mushrooms. And all these vitamins. Not psilocybin, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, not that kind of mushrooms, but I know <laughs> I'm just laughing because I mean, I have tried so many things and, and, you know, I don't out. think it's bad. It's okay, but it does can, it can get a little out of proportion. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, I think Baba, he wants us to take care of our body so that he can pummel us to death. Right. <laughs> we talked about that last week, I think. Um, but I mean, when I came to Baba, I was 51, and it was like a breath of fresh air because, you know, I'd go to the Pilgrim Center, and the Pilgrims were smoking, and, you know, I had been such a health fanatic, <laughs> and it was like coming to Baba just helped me find much more balance and to realize that 
it's much, much better to have a pure mind and heart than it is to have a healthy body. So who else? How do you treat your body? So Tina stuffs it with vitamins, the latest, greatest vitamin. How do you treat your body when you're... That only lasts a short time because there's so many of them. I just... I know. I know. I probably cover it. You cover Try it? Try to cover it. Try to hide it. Oh, okay. Interesting. And the Is that... I, I, yeah. Are you yeah. referring to because it, you're not the weight you want to be? Maybe. Correct. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I, I stopped uh, buying clothes. <laughs> yes, yes. I start wearing kind of the same things. And, and of course, your body could care less about mm -hmm. the clothes that you put on it. They do this incredible exercise in the nine-day school for the work. And um, you, I can't tell you this, the exercise because it's copyrighted and it's just for people who go there. But the, but the takeaway from it is that our bodies are this incredible servant to us. It's, it's an incredible friend and it, it's there for us through thick and thin. And, you know, you come out of that just, want, just loving your body for its faithful service. And, you know, and, and I notice how I treat my body when I'm believing it's not healthy enough. You know, I... I mean, I used to fast a lot and I, I was extremely, you know, torturing my body. Um, and I can't do that anymore because my body's wearing out. But yeah, anybody else, how you treat your body when you're believing that it's not healthy enough. So now notice how you treat yourself when you're believing the thought that your body isn't healthy enough, how are you treating yourself? And that's just a nice way to ponder, well, who am I? So we know who we really are, but how do we treat that? Like I notice my soul, I, I ignore it too much when I'm uh, over-identified with my body. You know, yeah. I'm ignoring what's really important. Putting too much attention on the body. Anybody else notice, how do you treat yourself, your soul, when you're believing the thought that your body isn't healthy enough? I mean, we hey, either... Tina. You're uh, muted, Tina. I either, you know, do something good for my body or I do more of what's bad for it, you know? Yes. Yeah. I don't know if it's putting that into words, like, you know, sometimes I don't do what I, what I need to do. I do what I feel like doing, which, like, I have a blood sugar issue, so I'll eat things that are not good for my body. Yes. <laughs> Whatever. Like, I'll eat yeah. too many carbs or eat something sweet. Right. Well, and you know, that reminds me of all the work we've done on the unconscious. The yeah. unconscious just is going to have its way, isn't it? I mean, yeah. we all do things, I think. I mean, I don't, I think you're not alone. I think that's what we all do. And, and, um, and I definitely notice, especially at night, that's my, my time when I just like to indulge a bit, you know, it's like, okay, I'm relaxing. Mm, I'll have this, even though I know that I'll pay for it. Um, so how do you treat I find yourself? that I can start to get pretty negative or just my thinking about myself and yeah. about life yeah. in general, just kind of downward so, spirals. <laughs> when I was, um, in training to become a certified facilitator of the work, I took a course on, on food. And we would come to the class every week with something that we really like to eat. And then we would like do inquiry, but we would mindfully eat it. And it was actually a beautiful uh, way to be more at peace with some of these impulses that we have. And so, and so I can, you know, you can do that yourself. Just consciously go to the refrigerator or the pantry and take that thing that you believe you shouldn't eat 
and then just really slowly, consciously enjoy it. I found it to be very beautiful and, and balancing. So I don't think I need to ask the question, what addictions, obsessions manifest when you believe my body isn't healthy enough? Because that's kind of what we've been talking about. But if anybody has anything else they'd like to share, please feel free to go ahead. When you're believing my body isn't healthy enough, addictions, well, obsessions. And in a way, it's, it's kind of a filling some kind of a void. You know, it's like... Um, yeah. you're you're filling a void you're yes. replacing it with something and you think it's food and you think it's going to go away and it might momentarily go away but you know it's still there so you yeah. haven't really addressed the core issue of your behavior well so or yes. your emotion that's causing the behavior yes and and I and I and I really uh, I, I definitely advocate for then knowing just do it consciously just love yourself for it and you just try it you know and see it really made a difference for me just enjoy that forbidden snack I think everyone might want to view because there's so much background noise it's hard to hear you. Yeah, it's true. There, there is a lot I apologize. Of I'm, I'm at the circle and the boys are uh, playing cards. So I, I'm trying to stay muted most of the time. It's, oh, it's my but We love to hear from you. So please, please do unmute when you're talking because it, it adds a lot to our, to our circle. Yeah, I was thinking that uh, about something I read the other day too, about how people who have more, or who are more on the, um, empath kind of continuum like if, if if you're an empath where you pick up you're sensitive or you pick up other people's feelings and emotions that sometimes um extra weight can be a, a barrier and be like a an important kind of insulate for that and yes I, I like insulation and so that's just that was that struck a chord with me as being really interesting as a motivation yes. for keeping that weight. yes yeah. that's that's Definitely something that I have um, done research into. And the other thing, though, that's really important for highly empathic people is to learn how to give an honest no. Because empaths generally don't have clear enough boundaries to, you know, because they're so empathic and want to be so helpful. So that's the other piece is to just really work on establishing boundaries and learning how to say no with love. Okay, so what are you unable to do when you're believing the thought that your body isn't healthy enough? What are you unable to do? So what I noticed today was I wasn't feeling very much energy, but I was pushing myself to accomplish many things. And, and so what I was unable to do was to just stop and give myself a rest. I did finally do that and it made all the difference. I was actually able to get recharged. Um, but sometimes I'm unable to just stop and be still and allow myself to just feel what I need to feel. Anybody else want to share what you're unable to do when you're believing that your body isn't healthy enough? I'm unable to think of anything else. I be it becomes very obsessive kind of thinking. Like with mm. the um, I, I, every day I wake up and I see if I can smell my deodorant. So, because they lose their sense of smell, and, <laughs> and, and you know, I might take my temperature. But oh, I, you know, I'm just I have a lot of fear about it because it's okay. So you're unable to just be at peace. Yeah. It sounds like it's better so. now because we don't have many cases here. But yeah, and do you go out? Yeah, I've been going out some more. Yeah, so that probably helps, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
Anybody else want to share what you're unable to do when you're believing the thought that your body isn't healthy enough? Okay. So let's go to the last sub question. What do you fail to see when you're believing the thought that your body isn't healthy enough? What do you fail to see? The truth, because I think that, what it, yeah, I think what happens is I um, I exaggerate in my own mind whatever is the problem. Mm, so thank you. Instead of being real, you know, actually, um, I you know, in in most of the time, in my case, it's not as bad as I think it is. Okay, great. Thank you for sharing that. I was failing to see that I, I'm just failing to see that I am healthy enough. I'm, yeah. I, I do what I have to do. And, um, and I, and I don't do all the things I did when I was younger. So that's what I fail to see when I'm believing I'm not healthy enough. You know? Oh, I'm a lot healthier than a lot of other people. <laughs> ah, good to notice. Yeah. That reminds me of when Baba says, you know, that we have to know, I can't remember his exact words, but I've thought about it a lot, you know, that we have to remember that other people are suffering more than we are. Right. Yeah, so that's a really good thing to notice. Anybody else? What do you fail to see when you're believing the thought, my body isn't healthy enough? Oh, maybe that the pain is, um, is burning sanskaras. <laughs> oh, yeah. Great. Beautiful. Could That's be. Good. Yeah. Didn't he say that physical suffering sometimes replaces mental suffering or that it's, you know, it's, well, it's in places. Well, he said, he, okay, let me just go back and find that because it's, it's pretty profound. He says, he says mental suffering is more acute than physical suffering, but he says physical suffering sometimes comes as a blessing because it serves the purpose of easing mental suffering by weaning away one's attention from mental suffering. The true suffering that counts is mental, which is mm -hmm. rooted in the frustration of desires. So um, I, I'm perfectly happy to have my attention taken away from mental suffering. Yes, <laughs> yes. So that's what I fail to see when I'm believing. Yes, that. yes, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Mental suffering is just pure torture, I have yeah, to I say. I don't like it either. <laughs> okay, so you're ready for question four. Who would you be without the thought that my body isn't healthy enough. Who are you without that thought? Hmm. Well, I think I would be more happy-go-lucky, more carefree, not so hyper-vigilant. And of course, you know, this COVID thing is my worst nightmare. Yeah. So you are burning sanskaras, my dear. <laughs> really, I mean, there's a gift in everything, and Baba is so, so in charge of everything that's going on. I noticed without the thought that my body isn't healthy enough that I'm able to just feel grateful for all the wonderful things that are in my life, whether my body is wearing out or not. It just doesn't matter. Mm. I also, I just had this image of my garden I have a little secret garden and I, I love being in it so much. And, you know, mm -hmm. I think when I was younger, I just, I wouldn't slow down that much, you know, to just mm -hmm. be, be enjoying the simplicity of, of my garden, mm -hmm. my little garden. Who else? Who, who are you without the thought that your body isn't healthy enough? Jackie, I'm thinking of you because I know your lifestyle is enjoying nature and your land. And, you know, I remember you even went swimming. And, and so I'm wondering if you notice without the thought all of these beautiful uh, things that you experience maybe come up. 
Yeah, no, I mean, I'm fortunate. I feel very healthy. And yeah. I love swimming. I love walking. I love nature. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm just thinking of the ways that I discount myself with the weight, you know, in yeah. terms of how I think I come across to others. And yeah, um, but yeah. And, and um, I'm sure that that YouTube video with Katie and Oprah is, is um, mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. online somewhere because it is beautiful. You really come to see that people, we love each other awesome. for our souls, not for the way we look. And, you know, it's such a kind way to live. Mm -hmm. So let's move on to the turnarounds. So Diantha, if you can post the, the turnarounds. The way we do the turnarounds for, with the body is we change it to my thinking. Okay, so if we're saying my body isn't he healthy enough, then it becomes my thinking isn't healthy enough. And we can specifically say my thinking of about my body isn't healthy enough. But would you, whichever way you like to do it, it can just be my thinking isn't healthy enough, but notice how you're thinking about your body isn't healthy enough. And mm -hmm. then let's look for those genuine examples, those authentic examples where this turnaround could be truer than the original statement. My thinking about my body isn't healthy enough. Mm -hmm. Just ponder that and then just please share, share your examples of where your thinking could just get a little upgrade. What I'm noticing right now is I'm just feeling my heart loving my body because it's such a faithful friend, servant. I, I really am having that experience right now as to how it's taken me through life and given me so many opportunities. And so I'm just like loving my body for the service that it's given. And it's just making me feel more at peace about my body. So my thinking about my body isn't healthy enough when I'm, when I'm trying to whip it into shape, when I'm believing it should be other than what it is, when I'm not being able to just enjoy the life that I have right now with this aging body. Who else? Hmm. They're an example. I think it helped me to be in India when I was really like a lot younger, like as a, you know, like late teenager or something like that, like to see people who had leprosy or who were missing limbs and just kind of crawling around in the streets but you know yes. not no wheelchair no not even a you know just living their lives and having you know their community around them. and it just seemed like that was just normal um you know yeah. and and then for so anyway just and how how much more fortunate I am to never have to probably experience that in this lifetime. Like at least, I don't know. Just mm -hmm. Thank you that. so much for sharing that insight. Um, yeah, it's like the body's just not the problem, you know? Katie tells a story where she was walking out in the desert with a friend and he had a heart attack, I think, when they were walking. It's in one of the books, but anyway. And he's like, I'm dying, I'm dying. And she's like, just totally at peace. You know, mm -hmm. I think she's holding his hand, whatever. She's like, life, death, what's the difference? And he just mm -hmm. went through all of the story that he had and he didn't die. But either way, you know, it's like it's reality. And, and so it's just okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of that that whole Zen thing before enlightenment chop wood, carry water after enlightenment. And it's the same thing when we think about our body, you know, we can die of all kinds of things and we can die with a lot of stress and worry, or we can just be peaceful with it. Bye bye body. <laughs> How soon am I getting another one? You know, my prayer is that I, 
I learned something in this life so that I can, you know, do better. Just, and, and, you know, Baba says we keep going forward, so I'm not too worried about it. Mm. Well, my prayer is if I come back and I'm in show business, I want to come back as a gay man because oh. you know, I feel like they have all the advantages. In <laughs> wow, that's amazing. But Tina, you were, you were a gay guy last lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably end up in a in Calcutta. Uh, uh, do, so do they get all the advantages? Do oh, you know yeah. why? Can you, but why? Because theater is run by gay men. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah. so. But what if you're like a lawyer in your next life? Then no. you're a guy to be a better lawyer or something? I, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. What if you are, are a lawyer, a lawyer in next life yeah what about i don't want to be a gay lawyer i don't think it's like <laughs> <popular>. <laughs> you just you want to be a gay actor right if, yeah. I'm a, if i'm an actor i want to be a gay man because they're the majority and wow. they they against everybody else especially well, on Broadway, for sure yeah yeah but you're right. in the business yep yeah. definitely I, I'll Not necessarily when we come back, circumstances are going to be different. Maybe That's I'll, for sure. I, said I could end up in a ditch in Cal Calcutta cooking over a smudge pot. So you could you could just ask to 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 be a really acknowledged actor in in your next life. That way, no matter who's who's mm -hmm. getting the jobs, you you'll be covered. Yeah. However, my warning to you is. We don't, I don't think we have a say in it. And I'm going to tell I you a, so. a quick I, you story. Know, I was sitting in the Samadhi. Like an accountant in the next life, I think. Somebody like very opposite. Yeah. I, those I, I was sitting in the Samadhi having this one-way conversation with Baba, telling him, thank you so much for a one, my wonderful family, I, my happy marriage, my children. And I'm done now. Thank you. I needed that experience. And now I'm done. And I really just want to be with you next time. And I was really like being very forthright about this. And right as I'm having this deep conversation with Baba about it, this little petite Indian woman walks into the Samadhi, drops her baby in my lap because I'm sitting on the edge. <laughs> so that she can go bow down and i mean i literally laughed because it was it was like baba was just showing me you know honey uh, what you want isn't what you get you get what your sense cars are going to give you right. so i just surrendered it it's like okay when i said i was a gay man i was kind of joking but no. i know i know and i wasn't joking when i wanted to be done but you know Mm -hmm. I've I've really enjoyed raising a family, but I just you know I had such a longing to just be with him, like to be with him like a mandali. Mm -hmm. And generally, you don't have a family if you do that. So, but it's like I wouldn't be ready. Obviously, I probably have to have more children. So that's okay. I love having children. Uh, <laughs> we'll get plopped not in my business. It's not my business. It's like it's not in my hands, and he made that really clear. You know, while we're on the subject, as I'm reading all the Baba books, I'm trying to read all the Baba books I have. So now I'm reading uh, Meher, uh, uh, Mara Meher. Yeah. And, you know, it's just so, the more I read about the close modeling, you know, what Bob, what the life is daily, <laughs> I could ever be able to really strip down that much. I know. Just incredible. Know. And how much we love Baba. Like, we intensely love Baba so much, but really we have this karma and that we're just used to everything a certain way. Yeah. It's, it's just so this true. Karma. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, we're moving closer yeah <laughs> we're moving closer but i yeah i don't have any illusions about getting to happen when we, when we bring it to baba whatever it is like let's say we're on the body you bring it to baba 
and that whole thing about one step to him, ten he he takes ten steps to you, mm. really does. And you, when you're when you're doing everything through him, it's like a channel of him yes. guiding you. And and you're still gonna go through that the ups and the downs, but it's good to go yes. right about it all. I find. Yes. So let's do the last turnaround now. The turnaround to the opposite. There's yeah. only two turnarounds because this is a, a simple sentence. Yeah. So my body is healthy enough. And I would love everyone who's willing to share examples where my body is healthy enough. And I've already shared some, you know. Well, I, I, didn't get, I didn't get the flu shot for two years in a row because it makes me feel sick. And I didn't get the flu. Uh, great. Yeah. Your body's healthy enough. Yeah, I guess the question is healthy enough for what? <laughs> it's just healthy enough. <laughs> well, healthy if it's for, enough. I mean, it's healthy enough for, you know, loving God or. Yeah. To be happy. And to I, not that's a beautiful example. My body is healthy enough that I, that my soul can love God. You know, even the most important thing, <laughs> you know, yeah. maybe there's intense pain. Sometimes even the intense pain makes me feel closer to God, you know? Yeah. So my body is healthy enough. And I can say my, my body is thin enough for enjoying yes. exercise, walk, yeah. swimming. I nature. know. I mean, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. My body's healthy enough to still enjoy food. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> get really sick and not even like food. Anybody else have an example to share? Um, to do all the work that Baba gives me to do, mental, mm. physical health, you know, so I can do service. I can do Beautiful. what I need to do. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Like, I'm just interested, what kind of service do you do? I, I'm just wondering. Oh, lots. <laughs> um, yes. Well, today I was at the circle getting rid of moldy books. Wow. And, and now I'm working on a spreadsheet of, um, uh, for a Meher Baba lover, uh, old timer who met Baba. Uh, a little, a big project I'm doing for him. So um, what about then, your translations? Well, yeah, they are kind of sitting waiting for me saying, uh, <laughs> hello, we are waiting. Yeah. And all these other things get in the way. But I'm, I'm hoping to structure my week so that I can spend a day on each project and maybe have one day off. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Plus Thank you for all the sharing that. that. You know, we do a lot of Zooming and hosting and yeah. you know, starting and collecting people or enticing people to do programs on Zoom. So, of course, Angela do does a whole lot of it. And yeah. uh, she, hook she hooks me in once in a while. I, I relent. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> but, lovely. Uh, we've got a great team. I mean, to me, the joy of life is sir, in service. Yes. And, you know, Baba keeps stressing that, um, you know, real happiness lies in making others happy. And I, when I'm suffering too much, I just have to stop and realize, oh, I'm too self-absorbed. I better just go do something for someone. Self-thought is the way to, uh, to suffer. Yeah. Yeah. Suffering. And I, I mean, that, yeah. that statement, real happiness, lies in making others happy. That's mm. like something that's a seed that planted inside of me. And I feel that it, I feel that I learn more about it, you know, as the years go by. Yeah. And it, it's like everything Baba says, you know, it's, it, it's ever growing, it's ever um, blossoming. And, and, you know, it's just, it's such a, an amazing thing. And it's so counter to the whole Maya thing, you know. And I think one of the gifts of being able to come together as Baba lovers is to really encourage and support each other in mm. this, in this what, you know, what we're doing is tr remembering him more and more and living, you know, for, for him. Um, because sometimes it feels like an uphill climb. 
Yeah. I read somewhere that, you know, there's like two types of people. Um, gen it's very generalized. Um, but it's, um, can you guys hear me? I had yes. an interruption. Um, service to self and service to others. And people who generally are ser uh, oriented towards service to others are happier. They, they yes. tend to spend less time thinking, you know, they don't have enough time to even think about themselves. So, yes. you know, and, and Baba said, this is a karma yoga or yes. you know labor phase that we have to do we just have to just do the work and he did the rest of it he did uh, yeah uh, you know for his lovers uh he he just left us with the work phase w would you correlate that with winding and unwinding sanskaras mm. <sighs> Well, if you don't get yourself tangled up with personalities as you're serving him. Yes. Yes. That's the key, isn't it? The golden key. Yeah, just, just for love. You just do it for love. Yes. And, but and but then, I, you feel know. Like, I feel like every time I'm doing some kind of Baba work, he's working on me. You know, yes. it's my opportunity to be worked on by him. So I welcome it. Whatever lesson he has, he brings it to my face and I'm, you know, able to see it and be with it and gradually uh, find the wisdom to um, not m repeat my mistakes. Thank you for sharing that. I, I feel like that's such a valuable insight. Um, and that is also my experience. <clears throat> and sometimes I'm like, whoa, I got more than I bargained for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything they'd like to share before I read you some closing quotes from Lord Meher? There's comfort in these closing quotes. <laughs> it's always nice to end with something that's very comforting. So this, this one is from page 2077 is during the blue bus tours. And, um, Baba said, what is the gross world after all but the medium of realizing spirituality? For example, the body is purely material, physical, and gross, but it is the medium for the soul to know itself, provided it is dealt with and handled rightly. Otherwise, it becomes a hindrance to spiritual progress. And then he goes on to say, similarly, scientific principles and truths if used rightly, help in the spiritual progress of the universe. But if improper use is made of them, they are bound to be a source of hindrance in the spiritual path. So what Baba says here about the soul, the, you know, the gross body is a medium for the soul to know itself. And that's really, I think, the beautiful conversation we've been having in this inquiry is our bodies are a vehicle and we need them uh, in order to come closer. Um, and then this last, this last quote is from page 4,659, and it's at Guru Prasad. And he's, he's talking about, well, I'll just start it. He's, he says, what is the picture of life in general? At first, you are a child absorbed in games. Then you grow young and pretty, become lost in youthful reveries, and in course get married. You have children. As you grow old, the worries pile up and get multiplied. Old age, with all its inevitable weaknesses, draws nearer each day. When finally, with an unsatisfied feeling, you have to leave the gross body. Can you call this a life worth living? It is not much different from the life of an elephant. I know your innumerable incarnations, wherein the self-same story is repeated over and over again. Remember, this is all a dream, but a significant dream. Its purpose is to make you aware of the nothingness of the dream itself. But you are so overpowered by ignorance and the self-sown illusory worries that you do not wake up to the situation and do not firmly resolve to lead the life of a real man. 
in the couplets, Hafez gives an indication of life perennial. This is the life one should aim at. It is for this life that you have a human form. And unless you decide to live life perennial now and make sincere efforts to do so, all previous human forms, so to speak, are likened to those of animals. So only the life of love for God leading to life perennial is worth living. One who loves God has only one longing, one worry, and that is to become one with God. This is the real life which leads the lover to the everlasting life. So hooray for our servant bodies that support us in wow. learning to love God more and more. And thank you, everyone, for thank you. coming thank together you. and sharing this inquiry. Wow, that was awesome. Thank you. Jay thank Baba. You. I have to go on another <laughs> call, so I'm going to leave yeah. now, but thank you. Oh, it's always good to see you, Tina. And we're going to continue with the body because it's just a nice correction because we do tend to get caught up in the body. Right. And all of its needs. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye, dear. And I wanted to um, share with you, I ordered the book and started reading it, Catching the Thread. Oh, yes. Such a beautiful book. I was kind of in a funk, and it really took me out <sighs> of my funk. Oh, it, I'm so it's glad. Such a, such a beautiful, gentle. I've read his books before. Years okay, ago. Yeah. Oh, Many really? Yeah, but not this well, one. When I was in Myrtle Beach in February, Joe DiSabatino turned me on to Llewellyn Von Lee. And so I borrowed, I think I borrowed that book from him and I just fell in love with it. And yeah. And so when I got home, I bought more of his books. But um, I, don't you